Welcome to Breadboarding. This is video 11 in the Breadboard 8088 PC series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is updating the computer to run the original Nanocomp monitor program. Now, I was originally going to be doing this using the C programming language, but after the previous video where we developed and built and tested the LED display and keypad, I managed to convert probably about half the software that we need for the monitor into 8088 assembly language. So we're going to continue with that. So it's probably worthwhile just having a look, first of all, why we need a monitor. Now, in order for us to do our basic floppy disk PC, we need to add quite a bit of hardware here and get a BIOS working so we can then boot MS-DOS. In order to do that, we're going to need something to allow us to do simple test software and be able to do test programs for these various things as we add them and ultimately we'll get the BIOS working. So why do we need a monitor program? Well, monitor was included in early micro. So the Apple one, for example, included Wasmon, which was named after Steve Wozniak, who developed it. And that ran in only about 248 bytes. There is a Ben Eater video on this, which is worthwhile having a look at. There's a number of videos he's done on getting Wasmon running on his 6502 breadboard computer. Tim Patterson, who was one of the first developer of MS-DOS when he was working for Seattle Computer Products, developing the 86-DOS operating system, apparently used an early version of uh, debug in ROM when developing the operating system, and this later became debug.exe, which is included on quite a lot of the MS-DOS versions, I think even going up to Windows 95. And some of the early micros, such as the Commodore PET, BBC Micro, Spectrum, Dragon 32, TRS-80, they included a basic ROM and that allowed similar features. So it would allow you to load and store programs to tape. And also you could inspect memory and write basic code to list out memory and to set memory. So it was possible to do basic things, not quite the same as the monitor will be looking at here. So the Nanocomp monitor is a very simple operating system. It was originally just running in 1K of ROM, although there was another 1K of sample programs which we won't worry about. And what it does is it initializes the system stack, initializes the reset and interrupt vectors, and in the 8088 version we also need to initialize the segment registers. It allows us to inspect and change memory, execute programs, display register values after breakpoints, so on the 6809, that was a software interrupt, which was 3F, and the equivalent on 8088-86 is int3, which is CC. It's a special version of the interrupt command that just fits in one byte. We're also able to load and save memory over the serial port, although originally this was saving and loading to audio cassette, and this used the Motorola S-Record format, which is a text format for storing binary data. Now, the original monitor was written in the Motorola 6800 assembly code. It was updated in July for the 6809 version, but fundamentally it was 6800 code with a few changes for 6809. Didn't make much use of the 6809. And in converting to the 8088, I'm just going to do very basic conversion. I'm not going to enhance or improve it very much, certainly not in the first round. Now, in video 12 of the original Nanocomp project, I reverse engineered and disassembled the monitor from a ROM that I had from the original project and with help from Mike Spivey's Nanocomp 6802 ROM disassembly where he'd done something similar for the earlier January version and this is included in the link there which I'll include in the description below and that helped me to disassemble the 6809 version and get that running. Now we need this 88 monitor to build and test the hardware and to run and debug an XT BIOS and as I said once the BIOS is operational hopefully we'll be able to then run MS-DOS. So let's take a look at the original assembly language code for the Nanocom. So the source code for the 6809 version of this is already up on the GitHub and the links are in the description below. And when we were doing the previous video, we already converted the key code, uh, key input and the display refresh code here. So the get key disfresh has already been done. There's a few extra routines getting a four digit address and a two byte hex input that we'll need to add. We've already done the seven segment display values here. And then the memory display function is the main brains behind the monitor, allows us to inspect and change the memory. Then the various reset and interrupt vectors. Resume is where the monitor menu effectively starts, where the dash appears and we put in the various commands we want. 
and then go is where the original code will initialize the instruction pointer program counter to execute the program continue base returns from a software interrupt after we've inspected the registers then we've got a few new ones we need to do so the clear display and the register display going to require a bit of work because the registers obviously on the 8088 are quite different from on the 6809 so this required a bit more work to update the code to work with the 8088 16-bit registers then the load and save routines for the serial port we won't be worrying about in this video we'll do that when we come to do the serial port so if we have a look at the 8086 monitor I've tried to document it as well as I can just be aware if you're making use of this don't assume that everything here it makes perfect sense so what we have here is an 8086 version and this is important because there was one particular command I tried to use early on which was push all which is only available from the 8188 upwards I already came across some instructions I wasn't able to use because of the limitations of the 8088 and there's quite a few initialization parameters here so in particular we need to say where we want the system stack to start we want to know what the data segments the user code segment the stack segments and the the segments we're going to use for accessing the peripheral interface adapter for the display and then we also need to initialize the various vectors that we need to have in the bottom first sort of uh, 1k of ram on the 8088 is where all of the interrupt vectors and things go so the first, after the reset, so we see the, where the code starts here is reset, but if we go down to the bottom here, we can see this is where the 8088 looks for its first instructions after a reset. So it goes to the FFFF0 is the hardware address, and then all that does is goes back to reset. So on reset, we initialize some of the interrupt vectors down in the bottom area of memory then we are setting up the segments that we need to use for the 8088 we re-enable interrupts once this initialization has been done then i have got some debug code still in here so fill memory fills the upper block of memory that we're using just with sequential bytes and this means that when reviewing the memory inspection we can at least see that the values are changing as we go from one location to the next then display a startup message including the version of the monitor so this is version one I have got some unique values put into the various registers so that when we initially push them onto the stack for use with the register display function at least it helps us to identify whether we're getting the right register values appearing against the right the right values so we have our non-maskable interrupt vector the resume which is where it wants a function's completed or if there's an invalid value uh, entered then it will go to resume and all this does is reinitializes the data segment stack segment and the extra segment just so that the monitor code will work we clear the display then get a, a key and then based on the key we go to the various routines there are a few complications I came across so the way how the 6809 executed the code from go was a little different and for the 8088 what I had to do is to move the entered address to a memory location then add the code segment to the word after that and then when you do the call you provide the address to that those two words where that information is so it's a slightly different way of, of executing that the continue function basically returns from an interrupt so it basically pops the register values that we've Put on the stack and then does an interrupt return the display refresh is the same code that we had in the previous video as is get key no real changes there slightly additional code here to input a four digit hex address for entering an address similarly for a two digit byte value some conversion routine to take an inputted key code and turn it into a hexadecimal nibble the seven segment left and right display routines we developed last time svn hex was something i had a bit of trouble with and i, I end up actually removing it from the code it's always been a little messy what this does is takes the seven segment display 
code from the display buffer and convert it back into a hex character, which is a bit of a messy way of doing things. And I've improved the memory display code so it doesn't need to use this anymore. The reason why I did this is I've mistakenly put a JP instruction here rather than JMP. So JP is jump parity on the 8088 when it should be JMP, a non-conditional jump. On the Z80, I think JP is jump, and so I just had uh, mistakenly put JP in a few places where I should be using JMP. Confusingly, it would work some of the time when the parity flag was set, but if something was an odd number, for example, then it wouldn't work. And so it would work in some circumstances, not in others. So that's something to be aware of. So this is the memory display routine now converted to run on the 88. And this bit of code here is where the SVN hex was being used. Now all I've done is I've used one of the extra variables, the, the high DX variable to actually save a copy of the data that's in the current memory cell. So rather than having to use the buffer to get the data value, I've stored it in one of the registers that we had in addition to the original 6800. And so that was the main issue that I had in developing this was the fact I was using JP rather than JMP for jumps. And then the register display code needed quite a bit of extra work because obviously now the register names are now two characters and the, the code here again required a, quite a bit of testing to make sure I was getting all of the register values correctly off the stack. And then for the moment, the save and load, we're just returning from those. Okay, so that's the code. It took a couple of days to get this all sorted. As I said, my mistake with the JP and JMP took quite a while to get to the bottom of. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to assemble this and to burn it into the EPROM, and we'll just check to see that the board is working with the original key test code first before we start to use the, the monitor code here. So the command needed is at the top of the file, just using NASM. Get a few warnings where the macro that pads out the 32K ROM with F. Now I'll just have a look at the existing nanocomp, power it on. Okay, so this is the message we got from the previous video, and this is just showing us the test patterns for testing out the various routines we were using, and then it's just gonna give us the key codes. That all seems to be working okay. So we're just gonna turn that off, and we're gonna put the EPROM into the programmer, and we'll switch over to XG Pro. So I'm just going to read the ROM first, just to make sure I've got it in right. And then we're going to load, just go from the key test. So this is the monitor binary, program that. Okay, now we'll just put that back in the board and power it on. And that seems to be coming back. There's a short delay because it's actually going through the memory and writing values to the memory. So that's coming up Nanocomp 8088 version one. So that looks good. What we'll just do is to have a look at what the functions on the monitor are. And then as we go through, we'll just test those. So we'll just have a look at the keypad and what the values are. So the monitor commands we have is M for memory inspect and change. G is go to execute a program at a given address. Save to serial port and load to serial port. We're not implemented at this point in time because we haven't got a serial port yet. CN is continue from a software interrupt. R is register display after an interrupt has occurred. I is just used to increment the next register or next memory location between M and R. RS, I have actually uh, plugged in the reset into the reset button on the main CPU board. And I've also included a small inverter to allow the non-masterful interrupt signal to go to the CPU as well. So we just need to press a key to get rid of the message and then we get the dash prompt. So the first thing we'll do is just have a look at the memory. Now what I have done, because there's no ability to change the data segment here at the moment, and so what I'm doing is using the memory at the top of the RAM. So this is 70000 up to 7FFFF. 
And we can see here that the memory location 0, 1, 2, and we can just see that the as we go through that, this will cycle. If we go to memory 1, 0, FF, for example, we can see then that it just goes back over. So that looks like the memory is OK. What we might also try and do is to change the memory location. So let's just in here, let's put um, 9, 0 for no op. Put a couple of no ops in there. And then perhaps CC for a software interrupt. Now abort gets us back to the monitor. That does a non-maskable interrupt. And if we just now try doing go, so if I try doing go, and what that has done is executed the code and it's actually gone into the register display. So this is showing us the flag register. Then we've got the code segment, instruction pointer, AH, DHB, X, BP, SI and DI. Now if I press reset again and then we just do register display, this is probably an easy way to see the values on here. So these will have the test values that I showed in the source code. So I've got F246. Then the code segment is F000. Instruction pointer 1234. And then AX is twos and threes. CX is fours and fives. DX is sixes and sevens. BX is eights and nines. Base pointer A and B. SI is C and D and DI is E and F. So that all appears to be working. So it's not a very complicated monitor, but it does allow us to do basic things. And um, for example, the main thing that we we're going to be needing this to do as we develop a BIOS is to put software interrupts in the assembly code so that we can then see what the register values are if we've got things which are not quite working properly. That's one of the things that we'll be doing in future videos. So the main conversion issues I had was the fact that the documentation I was working from was for the 8188 and there's no push A or pop A instructions. So you have to do each register individually. As I'd said previously, I mistakenly used the JP for jump and that's jump parity, not jump non-conditional. And so that caused quite a bit of confusion, particularly around the conversion of seven segment display values into hex. Using a call address with the code segment in registers, I needed to do that indirect call through RAM. And at the moment, the monitor doesn't have any way to change any of the segment values. So for the moment, I'm just using the code segment is running out of the ROM at the top of the memory. Then the data segment and the stack segment are both using the top 64K block of RAM. And then the extra segment there is pointing to the peripheral interface adapter and the serial port. That will become free once I've switched things over to use IO ports, which is the standard Intel way of doing things. But I wanted to keep the way of doing things in the monitor as, as simple as possible. So that's the Nanocomp monitor now working. The next video, what we're going to be looking at is adding a serial port and converting the load and save routines so we can load and save SREC. The NASM assembler that we're using for the 8088, 86 code is also capable of outputting SREC. So one of the steps that I had thought I was needing to do is converting that code to use the Intel hex file format. I don't really need to do because we can use SREC anyway using that assembler. And once we've got the serial port, what we should then be able to do is go into the more interesting bit to the project, doing the monochrome display adapter video controller and adding the PS2 keyboard controller are two of the foundational things that once we've got those in place, then we should be able to get much closer to the basic PC that we need. So thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, please hit subscribe. And if you found the content useful, please hit like. It just helps to make the videos appear higher up the rankings in YouTube.